Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this video tutorial on computer system architecture. In this video tutorial, we will learn different arithmetic and logic micro operations. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt, Assistant Professor, Department of Higher Education, Jammu and Kashmir. Let us start. First, let us have a look at the topics that we are going to cover in this video tutorial. We will start with what is a micro operation and know what are micro operations then we will cover different types of micro operations available in most of the processors then we will cover some important types of micro operations first arithmetic micro operations and then logic micro operations and finally we will see applications of logic micro operations so what is a micro operation as you are aware that the main purpose of the processor is to execute different kinds of instructions and these instructions are provided by the users and before executing these instructions these instructions must be available inside the ram unit so the processor before executing these instructions need to bring these instructions into the processor part so that different kinds of operations can be performed on this data to bring these instructions into the processor we call the process as fetch fetch is the process to bring the instructions from ram into the processor registers inside the processor we have two important components one is called arithmetic and logic unit and another are the registers the instruction and the data is stored inside these registers which are the temporary memory units inside arithmetic and logic unit or inside the processor and ALU is the component that performs different operations on these instructions. So if we expand this processor component, we get these different components inside the processor. The first and main component is arithmetic and logic unit, which performs the main arithmetic and logical operations inside the processor. So it has different components like status flags, it has a shifter, it has a complementer, it has a arithmetic and boolean logic unit which performs the arithmetic and boolean operations. This arithmetic and logic unit is connected with the registers which are the temporary memory components inside the processor through an internal bus. A bus is a set of connections or a pathway that com connects different components inside the processor and all these components are coordinated by a unit called control unit the main operation of the control unit is to issue different control signals to coordinate the operations inside the processor now if we further look at these registers these registers are an important component while executing an instruction because every kind of instruction that is executed by a processor requires that the instruction as well as the different operands must be stored inside these registers. So if we expand it, we get different kinds of registers. So we have data registers d0 d1 d2 we have address registers we have program status we have general registers we have pointers and index registers in addition to that we have some program status and general registers ax bx cx and dx so these are the different registers a set of registers that are used by a processor to perform different kinds of operations now when CPU performs all these operations on the data, the data must be stored inside these registers. So we can say that CPU performs all operations on data stored 
inside registers. So all data must be available inside the registers before any kind of operation is initiated on that data. So we can say that these operations which are performed on the data stored inside the registers is called a micro operation. So what is a micro operation? We can define it as an elementary operation performed during one clock cycle on the information stored in one of the one or more registers. So CPO performs different operations on the data that data must be stored inside CPO registers and during one clock cycle the operation that is performed on the data stored in these registers is called a micro operations. So for example if we want to perform an addition so that addition requires a number of micro operations to perform because first of all we need to bring the data of one operand inside one register and then the data of another operand inside another register and then we need to perform addition operation on that data and then we need to store that information inside some register and then bring back this result into the RAM. So there are a number of operations. So each operation that looks a unit or a single operation from user's perspective consists of a number of smaller micro operations inside the processor. So we can say that the operation of a processor is just like a function. Since we know that a function accepts some inputs, for example, f is a function and it accepts some inputs, performs some operation on that data and gives back some result. Same is happening here inside the processor. We are providing data to this function that is the processor in the form of registers. The processor performs the desired function which is the operation per, that is mentioned in the opcode and the result that we get from this operation is once again stored inside a register. So for example we have different kinds of operations add in order to perform addition, we need two operands on which to perform addition. So first operand will be available in register 1, another will be available in register 2 and then this CPU, this ALU will perform the desired addition operation on the data stored inside these registers and then that result will be the addition result will be stored in some register and that will be the result that will be sent back to the memory. So it, the operation of a microprocessor is just like a function performed on the data stored inside the registers. Now let us have a look at different types of micro operations. So we have different kinds of micro operations basically we have four types of micro operations so first one we call arithmetic micro operations the second one we call we call logic micro operations the third type is shift micro operations and the fourth one is register transfer micro operations now let us have a look at these different types of micro operations the first one is arithmetic micro operation. As the name suggests, it this kind of micro operation is used to perform some kind of arithmetic operation. So we have different arithmetic operations like we have addition, we have subtraction, we have increment, we have decrement, and we have arithmetic shift, which is different from the logic shift. So if we visualize these different operations, if we visualize these different operations, we can visualize them with this simple representation. So we can define every micro operation as this statement. We have register 1, then we have register 2 and an operation. So this operation is performed on the content stored inside register 1 and register 2 and the result is stored back in this register 3. So this is the general structure of 
these arithmetic operations. So we have these kinds of arithmetic operations. We have addition that is used to perform add or addition of contents of register 1 and register 2 and the result is stored back inside register 3. If we look at these operations every time you will see that the operation is performed on the data that is stored inside some register. So that is why we call these micro operations. The second is subtraction micro operation which is also an arithmetic micro operation and in which we subtract the contents of register 2 from the contents of register 1 and the result is stored back in register 3. Then we have another micro operation that is complement complement the contents of register 3 so this complement is required if we want to perform subtraction with the help of addition you know that we can perform addition as a plus b or we can perform addition as a plus minus b if we subtract if we add the negative contents of register 2 to register 1 that will be equivalent to r1 minus r2 so for that we perform the complement complement means to invert the contents of register to change the zeros into ones and ones into zeros and then we perform two's complement this is not an arithmetic operation but we can achieve the subtraction arithmetic operation with the help of these two operations addition plus complement plus increment so this is used to perform subtraction inside the processor we only have an addition component we do not have a subtract or a subtraction component we perform the subtraction with the help of an addition component or an adder so we can perform add uh, subtraction r1 plus r2 complement plus 1 this r2 complement plus 1 is equivalent to minus r2 it can't uh, it uh, uh, negates the contents of the register r2 which is equivalent to minus r then we have uh, increment increment means to increase the contents of a register by one if we have 10 inside the register r1 and we perform the increment operation we get 11 so that is equivalent to r1 plus 1 so we add 1 to the contents of register 1 and so that we get the desired increment result so the same is the case with decrement so these are the basic arithmetic micro operations so now let us have a look at the circuitry digital circuits that are required to perform these arithmetic operations so the first arithmetic uh, the first digital circuit that we require is a binary adder binary adder is a digital circuit that performs the addition so we require four full adders to perform a four bit addition so if we have two registers r1 and r2 and inside the r1 we have four bits 1010 zero, one, zero, and inside r2 we have again four bits then we require four full adders fa means full adders to perform the addition of these two registers each bit of the register r1 or register a is fed to the to the uh, consecutive full adders and the second bit is taken from the second operand and this c0 is the carry in which is the previous carry if from previous operation and this c4 is the carry out of the operation if we have some carry at the end of this operation and this s0 s1 s2 and s3 is the sum of these bits so a0 b0 will give s0 second bit will give s1 third bits will give s2 and the fourth bits will give s3 so our result will be the addition result will be s3 s2 s1 s0 which will again be stored inside the register then we have another that is called a binary adder subtractor which is a circuit an arithmetic digital circuit which performs both addition as well as subtraction at the same time so if we want to perform addition we can perform and if we want to perform subtraction this circuit can perform subtraction as well as I told you that we achieve the subtraction operation with the help of the 
negative logic that is we add the negative contents of the uh, subtrahend to the uh, add adder so that we get the subtraction then we have binary incrementer which is uh, achieved with the help of these half adders and if we want to increment the contents of any register by one we can use this circuit so these are different kinds of circuits that are used inside an uh, uh, cpo or inside an arithmetic and logic unit to perform different kinds kinds of arithmetic operations so let us put them together all these operations can be achieved with this four bit arithmetic circuit this is a four bit arithmetic circuit which has been designed with the help of four four cross one multiplexers and four full adders so we can use these to perform all kinds of arithmetic operations uh, whether addition subtraction whether increment whether decrement we can perform all these operations as you are aware that multiplexer is a digital circuit that selects out of n number of inputs any one input and puts it on the output line so depending upon the result value on the selectors if we have a four cross one multiplexer it requires two selectors if the result of s1 s0 s1 is 0 0 it selects the first input if it is uh, 0 1 it selects the second input and if it is 0 1 0 it selects third one and if it is 1 1 it selects the fourth one as an output so this circuit can be used to perform all kinds of arithmetic operations now for example if we want to perform addition addition micro operation so the first operand will be in a1 and second will be a and second will be in b so in a we have four bits since we are performing a four bit arithmetic operation a0 a1 a2 and a3 and these inputs are connected directly with the full adder the second input we get from b which is the B register that holds the another operand and it has four bits B0, B1, B2, B3. So we fed these four bits B0, B1, B2 and B3 to this multiplexer both directly as well as inverted. And then we have selectors S1, S0. These selectors select which of the operation we want to perform. And then we have SC in, which is the carry in if we have some carry from the previous operation. So, for example, if we want to perform addition using this circuit, we must have S0, S1 as 0, 0. So, we will use 0, 0. And then carry in is 0 because this is the first operation. Result Y, which is B, Y is uh, our result. And then we have the output, which is A plus B which is a plus b so it will perform addition of these two bits that data stored inside a and b the result will be stored inside the d d register which has four bits d0 d1 d2 d3 and if there is some carry that will be in the form of carry out now let us realize this circuit in a uh, beautiful software which is called uh, logisim which is a logical simulator i have simulated this circuit inside that and let us see the working of this arithmetic circuit using these different kinds of inputs so that we will achieve these operations Here I have opened the logism, logism and I have designed this circuit inside this logism using multiplexers. I have four multiplexers, four full adders. I have input registers A and B. The individual bits of these input registers 0, 1, 2, 3 are uh, connected accordingly as shown in the circuit with directly with the full adder and one bit from this b is connected with the multiplexer directly as well as inverted and this is the selector s0 s1 and this selector will select the kind of operation that we want to perform so let us see how we can achieve the addition operation so for example if we have this content 
0, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1, and we want to perform the addition operation. So we must have S0, S1 as 0, 0, which is desired. C in is 0, and what is the output that we are getting? We are getting 0, 1, 1, 1. So which is the addition of these two bits? So for example, if I put another 1 here, so I get the result as 1, 0, 0, 0. If I put another 1, so this is the result. I get 1, 0, 1, 0. So depending upon the kind of data that I want to put inside these registers, I can achieve the desired function. Similarly, if I put it as 0, 1, so if we look at the, our diagram, what was the 0, 1 operation? In 0, 1 operation, we get the subtraction. So if we want to perform the subtraction, so let us see 1 minus 1 is, if we want to perform the subtraction, 0, 1, so it should be 1, 0 because it is inverted. So this is the result that we get. We should have S0 as 1 and S1 as 0. S0 as 1 and S1 as 0. And this is the result. And our carry must be equal to 1. So now let us see what is the result. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. And this is the subtraction result that we have achieved. So for that we must have S0 as 1, S1 as 0. And Cn must be 1. Then we get this result. So this circuit can be used to perform all kinds of these operations. Different kinds of operations. So that we can you realize this circuit as an arithmetic circuit. So moving ahead, let us see the operations that are called micro operations. This is the second type of operations. These are called uh, these are called as uh, logic micro operations. So what are logic micro operations? Logic micro operations are the operations performed on strings of bits stored in registers. When we performed the arithmetic operations, we were performing the operation as a whole on all the contents stored inside that register. Now inside the logic micro operations, we target the individual bits stored inside the registers. So those are called mi logic micro operations. So we can say that these logic micro operations work on individual bits. They do not work as a whole. We target each individual bit. So logic operation is performed on each individual bit. Then these are useful for bit manipulation. If we want to perform different kinds of bit ma manipulation and as we are going to see different kinds of bit manipulation example, uh, examples at the end of this lecture. So for that we can make use of these uh, logic micro operations. So these are also useful for making logical decisions based on the bit value. So if we want to take some decision based on the value of an individual bit, then we can make use of these logic operations. So as a symbolized statement, we can visualize these logic micro operations in the form of this statement. We have uh, P, which is the control variable. So when this control variable is equivalent to 1, then and only then this logic micro operation will be performed. So this is an enable bit. We can say that it is an enable bit whether to perform this operation or not. If P is a control variable, it is a status bit. If it is equivalent to 1, then this micro operation, this logic micro operation will be performed. Then we have the destination register which will hold the result the resultant data the that will be stored inside this r1 and again we have r1 r1 stores the operand one and we have r2 which stores second operand so we want to perform this boolean or logic operation on the bits stored inside this register r1 
and the bits stored inside this register R2 and the result will be stored back inside this register R1. This logic operation will be performed only if this control variable or the control uh, value is equivalent to 1. Now, let us uh, look at the list of uh, micro operations we have, different kinds of micro operations that we have. So, we have 16 different kinds of micro operations that can be performed on two variables. So, if we have two variables x and y, and on these two variables, we can perform 16 kinds of operations. So this is the set of logic micro operations. So here is the truth table for these logic micro operations. Let us see what are these different logic micro operations. So first one, if the contents uh, uh, are stored in X and Y, then the first logic operation is F0 equal to 0 which is to initialize the register output register with zero so this means whatever the content stored in x whatever the content stored in y we have to initialize the output register as 0 0 0 0 so which is equivalent to clear the contents of the output register which this is the clear operation so for example x is 0 0 1 1 and y is 0 1 0 1 still we are performing this first logic operation so the output will be f equivalent to 0 which is clear the contents of f register so if we want to clear the contents we can use this first logic micro operation then we have second logic micro operation which is and boolean and logical and which performs the and of individual bits of the contents of register x and contents of register y so one one is one in the and operation one zero is zero zero one is zero and zero zero is zero so in the and operation whenever uh, both the inputs are 1, we get the output as 1, otherwise we get 0. So that is the AND operation. So this is second logic operation. So F1 equal to X, Y. And we do not write this, when we write this as an expression, we do not write the AND operation. It is equivalent to an, uh, a multiplication operator. So in the logic micro operation or notation, we present it as a cap, this cap. This is representing an AND operation. Then we have another AND operation and the AND is performed on the inverted contents of B register. So for that we can make use of this third function, for third boolean function, F2 equal to X and Y0. Y0 means inverted contents of Y. So we can write it in mod, uh, logic operation as F equal to A and B complement. Similarly, we have f3 which is the transfer which is simply to transfer the contents of a into the output register so we have a as x equal to 0 0 1 1 y is 0 1 0 1 so if we are performing this operation the contents of this x register 0 0 1 1 will be transferred into the output register so this is simply f3 equal to x the contents of x are directly transferred so similarly we can perform other operations which are transfer b exclusive or or nor exclusive nor complement complement of a nand and set all the contents to zero which is the opposite of the first uh, micro operation so similarly this is the truth table for these micro operations if x is 0 0 1 1 and y is 0 1 0 1 F0 gives 0, 0, 0, 0. F1 gives the AND operation of these two. F3 gives the AND operation with the complemented value of Y. F3 gives the transfer and so on. So this, these are the 16 different micro operations, logic micro operations uh, that can be performed on the contents of two variables. Now let us have a look at the circuitry that is required while performing these logic micro operations. So this is the logic circuit that is making use of logical gates and or XOR not. These four gates are used 
along with a multiplexer to realize all the logic operations we can perform all kinds of logic operations using these so we have content stored in ai and bi ai represents ith bit of the input a and bi represents the ith bit of input b if we have two bit then we can have two input nand two input and and these different uh, circuits will be two input if we have more than two bits then we will have accordingly more than one input more than two input gates so this multiplexer will select the kind of operation out of these four operations which kind of operation we want to perform since we have uh, four cross one multiplexer it will be able to select one of the four kinds of micro operations so if s1 s0 is 0 0 so we will have and if it is 0 1 we will have or if it is 1 0 we will have xor and if it is 1 1 we will have complement now again let us uh, realize and see the working of this arithmetic uh, this uh, logic circuit inside the logisim software so let us see these logic operations inside this circuit so this is the circuitry of uh, this logic uh, circuit and i have designed it inside this logisim and now we can see the working of this circuit so it will be able to perform uh, and operation or operation exclusive or operation or not operation depending upon the selectors we can select any of these four operations and the output will be output will be shown inside this output bit since i have taken only two bits we can take more bits if uh, i have taken it as a single uh, bit circuit we can increase the number of bits let us see the working so this is in working mode now if we put the selectors as s0 s0 s1 as 0 0 so this means it will be able to select this operation and operation so 0 0 gives the operation as 0 so if it is 1 0 it will again give output as 0 if it is 0 1 again we have 0 and if it is 1 1 we get the output as 1 so which is the function of and of and circuit now let us see it for or operation so now this second input will be selected so second is for or operation so one one gives one one zero gives one zero zero gives zero and zero one gives again one so this is an op or operation now we can realize it for this exclusive or operation if it is one zero so now this third line will be selected which is the exclusive or operation so in exclusive or operation we have output zero if both the bits are zero or one zero zero it will give output as zero if it is one one it will again give output as zero but if any of the bits is opposite then it will give the output as one so one zero 1 0 it will give 1 and this is for not if we want to perform not operation and it is selecting a single input so it will be performing not operation on this so this is the working of this logic of uh, circuit inside logisim so moving ahead let us now have a look at different applications of these logic operations these logic operations have different kinds of applications as i told you that these are used to set individual bits and we can use those for different kinds of operations or different kinds of applications so we can use a, these to manipulate individual bits or portions of the word in a register so if we want to set a selected uh, uh, portion of the bits inside a register we can make use of these logic operations so for example here are some of the frequently used operation applications of these logic operations so we can use selective set that we will be seeing what this selective set is selective complement selective clear mask clear insert and compare so here are the operations that are shown how we can achieve these micro uh, logic operations uh, so first we will have 
and input register A on which we want to perform some kind of operation. For that we will be using a temporary register B that will be used to set those bits. For example if we have selective set we want to set a particular uh, number of bits inside this register A we will be using this B as a tool to perform the kind of operation so that we can perform that operation. So we can perform for example selective set the data will be stored inside A then the operation we can use different these logic operations to set or select to complement or clear and then a temporary register that will be used for this operation. So we have this register which contains the modification bits that the bits that we want to modify and then we have the logic operation the operation that we want to perform. Now let us see these now, op applications one by one. So, how to achieve these different kinds of uh, applications using these logic operations? The first one is selective set. So, what is a selective set? In a selective set, the bit pattern in B register is used to set certain bits in A. So, if we want to set certain bits inside a register, and we can use this selective set. So how to achieve? Let us see with the help of an example. So for example, if we have register A that is holding the contents 1100 and we want to set these two bits 1 and 1, these two positions, this bit and this bit, the second and the fourth bit, we want to set them. Set means we want to you achieve uh, one result with in, in these places. For that we will use this B register and inside this B register we will place the contents and corresponding to the bits that we want to set we will put a 1 otherwise every else bit is set as 0. Then which operation to perform so that we will achieve the desired selective set operation? We use an OR operation, logical OR operation. So if we perform logical OR operation of A and B, we will achieve the contents as 1, 1, 1, 0. So this means this 0 is unaltered, is the previous content. This 1 is the previous content. We have set these two bits second and fourth one second has was zero and we have set it to one this fourth one was already one and we have set it to one and it had remained as one so we have been uh, able to achieve this selective set with the help of this micro operation next let us see selective complement what is a selective complement the bit pattern in b is used to complement certain bits in the selective set we are setting certain bits to one in the complement we are setting them to their complement value if we have zero we are setting that to one and if we have one we are setting that to zero so let us see with the help of an example so we have 1100 zero, zero, and we want to complement bit number two and bit number four so bit number two is holding zero it should have the result one in the final result and bit number four is having one and it should have zero in the final result so in selective complement so the result we should get in these two places is since this bit is zero the resultant bit should be one and since this bit is one the resultant uh, data should hold a zero at this place so we can use b and inside the b we will use the selection bits and then the operation is exclusive or so if we want to achieve select to complement we can make use of this exclusive or operation and this exclusive or operation will help us to select to complement certain bits that we want to set let us move ahead then we have selective clear the selective clear bit as the name suggests it is used to clear certain bits in register a with the help of the register b so for example if we have original content says 1100 and we want to clear these two bits 0 and 1 clear means we want to achieve 0 at these second and fourth position so we can make use of b register to set these register uh, these bits and the operation that we will be performing is a and b complement 
we have to perform the F3 operation that we saw A and B complement. So when we perform A and B complement operation, the resultant data will be we will achieve a zero at these two positions. We will be able to clear second and third bit position. So moving ahead, next operation is mask operation. The mask operation is used to clear certain bits in A. The bit pattern in B is used to clear certain bits in A. In the mask operation, we want to mask or clear certain bits. We want we do not want to show those bits. We want to set them to zero. For example, A, A is the original data and B is the bit pattern. We want to mask the bit number zero and one. So we want to mask these two bits. So we want to clear them. So the result that we get is the, uh, the mask operation we achieve with the help of AND operation. So we know that in the AND operation, whenever both the inputs are 1, we get 1. Otherwise, we get 0. So we want to mask all those bits except those having 1. So if we have 1, so AND operation 0, it will give us 0. And if the original data is already 1 and we perform an AND operation, we will again get the same result as 1. So we can achieve this mask operation with the help of this AND operation. Then we have clear operation, which is used to clear some uh, particular uh, bit positions, which we have already seen. It is used to clear certain bits, which can be achieved with the help of this uh, exclusive OR operation. The last operation is insert operation. And this insert operation is used to insert certain bits inside a register. It is used to uh, 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 introduce a specific bit pattern into a register, leaving the other bit positions unchanged. So it is achieved by a mask operation and then an OR operation. So for example, if we have original content as this A is equivalent to 1101 and so on, and we want to mask the first four bits. So we want to mask uh, these bits so that these bits remain unchanged and we change only these bits. We want to mask these bits. So how to achieve this result? So first we perform the mask operation which is the AND operation. We perform AND operation of these two bits these two registers 1 0 is 0 0 0 is 0 and so on then we perform the OR operation of these two the intermediate result and the second result which is 1 0 1 0 so this is the pattern that we want to achieve so actual contents that we want on these first four bits is 1010 in order to achieve this in order to uh, add these or insert these four bits at the first four positions the rest of the bits should remain unchanged we first perform the uh, mask operation which is to perform an end operation with the one at all places that we want unchanged and zero zero at the place at which we want to insert certain bits then we perform the OR operation on this intermediate result with the uh, uh, bits that we want to introduce into this original data. So that is 1010. The rest of the bits are 0 since or perf performing an OR operation with 0 will put uh, make the result unchanged. So we get the result as 1101 and so on. So in, in place of 0001, we have inserted 1010 and in the rest of the bits have remained unchanged. So we can use this insert operation. So these were the different kinds of applications that we can achieve with the help of these logic micro operations. And this uh, is the end of this lecture. So thanks for watching this. Thank you.